originally from New Zealand, but been in Singapore over and on about 17 years now. Uh, so I've been running Chili Bin WordPress web design for nine years here now. Um, so I'm just going to have a quick chat. Hopefully, it's a pretty big topic, but hopefully we can get through a little bit of stuff here about building a custom homepage with advanced custom fields. All right. <coughs> So as I said, I'm a developer, designer, kind of chief of all trades, master of none here. And I've been sort of using WordPress off and on since the very early versions when it was B2 Cafe Log and I was blogging about really interesting things about in high school. So as I said, I've been running this agency since 2009 and working on various large products small projects but yeah at the moment sort of looking and focusing on uh, SME and startups alrighty so in order to kind of solve these issues we're going to find out what client what clients have in common so essentially um, they're really scared of breaking websites so once you hand them back to them speaking from an agency perspective or speaking from a developers perspective once you develop a site and then give that back to the client. Um, sort of whether or not you want to keep them on a maintenance retainer or you want to sort of get rid of them um, and they manage their site on their own. Those sort of, you want to give them something that they can maintain and something they can manage themselves, not coming back to you with every little content change. But they're not really going to be playing around and messing around with something too much unless they're that way sort of inclined. So you want to give them something that they don't have to worry about code, they don't have to worry about, uh, we don't have to worry about breaking anything, essentially. Um, so apart from that, they're also looking at ways to grow their business using the tool or using the website that you've provided for them. So it needs to be flexible in terms of growing with their business because you don't want them going to another developer in a year or two years time and say look this thing didn't work and respending all that money all over again so they want the best value for money um, in, the, in their dealings with you as the designer um, and their internal operations where can you save them time and where can you save them money so the WordPress community I guess kind of looked at solving this problem through page builders um, it's a, it's a simple way of sort of pushing layout and design into uh, the WordPress editor. Uh, it's a flexible option, it's an affordable way, and um, they work by sort of turning the WordPress editor, which is usually just a text box, um, into a widgetized area built up of columns and rows, rows and columns, and then inside those columns you can then put uh, videos, text, images, anything you want. So they also offer drag and drop functionality. So pretty much anything that you find on Theme Forest will have all that built into it. So you can sort of build whatever you want. Sounds great. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> no, 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 seriously. Th some of the page builders are pretty good. Um, they just they sort of cater to an audience that doesn't really know what they want, um, or you're sort of not using your experience as a designer or a, or a developer to kind of push that on onto your client to make decisions about layout and design for them. So the real problem is that is that basically. So we're not using our experience, and why should the client, being not an expert expert in this area? be forced to make layout and design decisions when essentially it's not their core role, it's yours. Do they really need options where they change fonts or dig into any CSS or anything like that? Not really. Um, so it also comes apart when we make the mistake of giving them too many options and mistaking that for flexibility. So that becomes overwhelming. Um, I'm not going to go into really bad mouthing any but there's um, Pippin who's a developer of some pretty good plugins out there um, EDD and um, seven, Restrict Content Pro and a few others he did a write up last year of about 20 or 30 page builders and went through kind of 
each of them there. So if you're looking at page builders, then that's a good review. But we won't really be talking about that anymore. We're talking about advanced custom fields. So this is something I've used. Geez, how long? Probably since the start of the business. I don't know when it first came out, but at least since 2009, been using different variations of this uh, to solve problems for my clients. Essentially, they were coming back and saying, you know, you didn't want to put short codes into a text editor. You moved it to the visual editor, back to the text editor. Changes were made and things like that. So what I did is strip all that out and put it into custom fields. So it's essentially a page builder for developers of sorts. It allows you to create Metabox areas. Now, WordPress itself allows you to create Metabox areas if you dig into that code and also at the bottom of your WordPress theme. Most, most times it's hidden, but you can sort of use the UI for that as well that they provide. It's just not as user-friendly in my experience. So there's two variations of, of ACF, ACF4, which is a free one in the repository, and ACF5, which is paid. Um, and ACF5 will then be merged into the repository very shortly. Licenses are 25 bucks Aussie for a site or 100 bucks for a lifetime license for ACF Pro. Very well documented, um, so I won't go into too much sort of code here at the moment, um, but yet yeah, it has lots of support on their website. So, as mentioned before, here are the normal WordPress custom fields. So. You know, you can get by if you need to do a few little things with it, but they're not that user-friendly. Okay, for a little snippet or something like that. Whereas an ACF field, um, you can have a tabbed interface, you can, you know, show displays of pictures, you can have WYSIWYG editors, repeaters, and a whole bunch of different fields. So I think there's 30 or something different fields now. So the implementation is pretty basic in terms of a PHP, Bit of code, and I think there's a couple of plugins out there which will allow you to drop this code in if you're not specifically familiar with PHP, but you can uh, build blocks and things using ACF. So the first one, you basically return the field name and it prints it out to you, and then you can return it as a variable by using get field. So there's plenty of documentation about that. I won't go into too much detail. Um, so, so another way of getting that field information, and that's using get post meta, and Bill Erickson has a good, um, a good link about that. So that if your clients do turn off advanced custom fields, for example, that your website won't break, um, because those the field and get field are both exclusive to advanced custom fields. Right, let's get stuck in. Let's build a homepage. So, the design is approved by the client. Content was provided up front. So we basically need to define the custom fields to create the layout. Insert that content. So that's how all projects work, right? Nothing is ever different. All right, so I've built a bit of a demo site, um, which I can show you all later, and we're going through it now anyway. And it looks a bit like this. So it's just a basic site, um, you know, hero area at the top, call to action, a little bit of about information, some numbers and stats, then as you go down there's some events and things like that. So basically building something like that is pretty simple um, with advanced custom fields. So let's go into defining some fields. Okay, so is this a video? Maybe that one's not a video. Okay, I've just taken a mouse over that one. Okay, so at the top, wait, what's going on? Okay, so at the top here we have a hero area, um, background, title, subtitle, hero button text, and hero button URL, which I believe Okay, so it's basically this area that we're building here. So what fields do we need? 
Number one is a background, which is an image field, which is an array. Number two is a title field, text field. Three, subtitle text field. Four is button text, and then text field, and then you also need a link for that as well. So all these um, we will need to define, which I built just before. I'm not sure why it wasn't coming up. So these are these fields here that were shown before. So at the top we have a hero, which is just a tab. I like to use tabs to organize each section, just for ease of access on the, on the back end. Um, then we have a hero image, which is an image field, the text fields, and then the URL field. So going th further through the design, um, this is an about us section, which is essentially a text area on the left and then an image on the right. This section, which is the metrics area, <coughs> is some text, and then we have some uh, what, a repeater section. So it's essentially you can have multiple columns of data there and control each of those. So the metrics area here. Where is a video? Is that working? Should be a video here. That's a bummer. Anyway, I'll just. Oh, there we go. Okay, so the metrics area is um, defined as a tab, and then under that tab we've got the intro, which is just a text field. Underneath that we have the repeater. So that's a repeater section, and then you have subfields under that. So I've just got a number field and a, a text field and a text field and a number field, and then we can add as many fields as we want, and we can just pull those out at any time. All right. Then going on into the um, events section. Uh, there's not much ACF here, just the intro section at the top, and then I've just got a custom loop which pulls through those, uh, those images, which I didn't resize correctly. Then the testimonial section, which is similar to what we had before with the metrics, which is just a repeater, but with three fields this time, one for text, one for the image of the woman, and then um, the title, um, or her name, and these are the repeater fields that I've added here. Right, and then in the footer, essentially what we have here is some text and then a gravity form, um, which just is outputted as a shortcode on the page, and we're done. So this is what it looks like when it's completely built, and I will, um, I've got a JSON file, essentially, that you can upload into advanced custom fields when you're ready. Um, afterwards and then you can get this layout you still need to build it in PHP and I'm going to show you a little bit of that later but that's how it will sort of look out towards the end once it's been built so just custom fields and then it's assigned to the home page you use different multiple locations there different post types and you can also change it to whatever page you want or if you want to do things with taxonomies or based on page templates. If you want to do user fields, you can do all that as well. Um, but at the moment, we're just doing it for the home page. Is it active? Yes, it's active. Standard meta box or if you want no background on it. Where you want it positioned on the sidebar, under the title and then how you want the labels to be displayed left or top. And then what you want to need to hide out of the WordPress editor. If you want to remove the content editor, the excerpts, any custom fields or anything like that, you can do that. Right, so let's populate some content. So this is what it looks like once you've um, loaded up in your home page in the page viewer. So selecting an image there, Putting in some text. I'm using a little bit of basic HTML there just to separate separate those lines. Um, put in a subtitle field there, a little bit of text here. 
and then the button URL as well. <coughs> so as you can see, it's pretty simple compared to if you were having to do something like this with you know, a normal WordPress editor, you would have to be um, dealing in lots of HTML, which would be a real, uh, real problem for your clients. So once that's done, save that and load it up, and then you can move on to the next tab, which I pre-populated, and I'll re-add that image. And a basic WYSIWYG editor there. You can change your normal header styles and, and all your normal WordPress editing functions are there as well. Save that. And then this is the repeater section. So as we have, you um, can change one of those numbers there. And then that will then be displayed on the front end as well. So you can add more or you can add less rows. You can reorganize them by dragging and dropping those numbers and things there. You can drag and drop those into different positions if you so want to. Um, or you can use the plus up and down there for 340 days till Christmas. Right. And then the same goes with the events. I've just got some basic information there. The testimonials is the same as well. So that's a repeatable section. I've just got it in a different layout. So that's in a table layout. Adding some additional content there. So that goes through like that. And essentially the result is that you get a home page that sort of looks like that once it's done. I mean obviously there's some PHP in the back end for it, but in terms of changing all that content, it's all available to be done without your clients ever having to kind of dig into any code whatsoever. So they should be able to uh, update that website um, and make it extendable for their business without any real code to be touched. Um, going into the code now, um, specifically, I um, and our company use the Genesis framework from StudioPress. Um, I use a Bones for Genesis child theme uh, to start all our projects. Um, it uses SAS, uh, Node.js, Grant and Bauer, and there's a website there for that. I use PHP Storm as an IDE or a builder, and there's a link for that. And for version control, I use Tower and GitLab because this is just something I'm still getting into for all that. Alrighty, let's just basically run through a little bit of code here and then we'll see if we got any questions. Okay, so it's basically builder. Um, there's a little bit of secret there. Um, if you have an ACF JSON folder in your theme, and you sync that to the um, to the development server. It will actually pull down your ACF fields, so you can back that up as well. So basically, going through, there's some SAS folders and things in there for organizing content. But what we're doing is building the front page. So on the front page, there we're pulling through. Well, we're getting the using get field to get the variable, then using that. And we're getting the hero size, which we've defined earlier. And once we have that content, um, we're then just setting it as a background image. So there's code there to set that as a background image. And then some other style things using Flexbox. Um, we're then getting the title, the subtitle, outputting the button URL and the button link as well. So that should all be pretty straightforward. The documentation and all those fields and the code for that is all with um, the Advanced Custom Fields website as well. So there's plenty of documentation about that and what the fields do. Elliot, the developer, has heaps, um, heaps of good documentation around that one. So. The second area is essentially, you know, pulling through that content area, then pulling through an image. So on the right hand, right hand side, that image will be displayed, 
and we're just pulling through it as a array object so we just need to get a couple more things about it pulling through the size the width um, just to make it a bit lighter on the server we're grabbing the large size but that could be obviously the exact size that you need this is um, some code for a repeater so a repeater essentially says if there are rows what do we do with those rows adding a little counter in there as well so I can do um, some different time displays so once we have those rows what do we do with them and if you're working inside a repeater the code is a little bit different because you need to use uh, get subfield or the subfield which is different to get field or the field because we're working inside a repeater and then you're closing your loop and ending that and moving on to the next section which is very much the same as you go down this is just a a custom loop I have for getting some events from Modern Tribes events calendar and displaying those. I don't need to look at that anymore. <coughs> so basic WordPress loop and arguments, really standard stuff. So it basically goes on until the page is built, but as you can see, it's pretty simple. If you're familiar with PHP, if you're not and you're used to working in HTML all the time, then you can just plug and play that PHP code inside your original HTML, where you would usually have text or where you'd usually have that information. So you can just plug that in as you see fit. So that's the other repeater for the testimonial section and we're grabbing an image and that's just a thumbnail size image for the woman's photo and returning her name down at the bottom as well um, sorry, do, do, do you really? Yeah. I don't know if I can zoom, can I? I don't know. video, can I zoom in? Will your slides be available online? yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll put them up at the demo.chilibin.com.sg site and I'll put them on the meetup as well um, and I'll also put the, up the source code as well um, for the ACF fields but yeah sorry about that, it's a bit small isn't it but all the documentation is available here um, and I will put up that information there's a WordPress uh, ACF group on Facebook there's ACF extras where people are sharing code Bill Erickson's a good developer who shares a bit of content about it as well and then there's lots and lots of code examples on that site. And that's it, basically. Uh, any questions? <laughs> Run through creating a home page in 20 minutes. Are you primarily seeing this for um, front end usage? Or do you, do you see? <coughs> Yeah so, once, yeah, so once a design has been approved and once it's ready to go, all you're sort of doing is giving the client access to build out that design or change that, or change their content in that design. So you might not have final content when the design's been done or the client wants changes to that content along the way. By building a layout in that way, I find it's really easy to give it back to them and say, look, You've got X amount of fields. I usually add you know, some descriptions around those fields as well to tell them how to use those fields. Um, then they can just go into the site, plug their content in, make any changes, and so forth. I mean, there are other ways of sort of building using advanced custom fields. There's a module called Flexible Content, which allows you to define content blocks. Let's say you want a column grid with three columns, a column grid with four columns. You would then define those and they could sort of use a page builder to build that themselves. So you see that's more of like a complement to the page builders? Or? I th no, I'm sort of replacing page builders. I mean, I don't think you should give your client layout choices. I mean, that's why they've come to you anyway. Okay. Well, let's go <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Um, yeah, I'm wondering if you use some plugins. Is it different for uh, for your clients? Like, do your clients require a lot of different plugins? Because most plugins, I would say, if they generate content, they are not compatible with that. So, do you think this is an issue, or do you think like in practice it rarely <coughs> ever comes up? Because um, most home pages you don't need that many plugins. Yeah, no, I mean, it sort of depends on what you're doing with your layout and, you know, if you are using plugins that, let's say, have short codes and things like that, you can plug those short codes straight into a normal WordPress WYSIWYG, which is part of your ACF module, so you want to define your normal, let's say, hero area, and then you want um, an events calendar or something, so you plug in a short code, and that will just display in a normal WordPress editor format. So WordPress goes through the code and runs all the same functionality that it would as if it was the normal, you know, normal editor at the top of the screen. Cool. Thank you.